the many things podcast uh, the data okay so basically with the i got an email today since it's the start of the year january 2023 and it was from google it says you're receiving this email because you turned on location history a setting that saves where you are on your private timeline now it has told me uh which countries i've been to which cities told me how much i've driven in the year so i've driven 5000 miles which work and for 278 hours so i worked it out i've been i've been in my car driving for 11 days last year um it told me how much i walked 212 miles in the year which i don't know if that's high or not 212 miles in a year it's less than a mile it's, a day. it's not loads is it well in the year it's not that much it's more than a lot of people. It's probably more than most people. You think? I th- yeah, I think most, well, most people. I thought people in cities well, walk. If you work in an office, if you work in an office, it's probably more, uh, less than that. Like most people now don't, don't really like walking or avoid walking if they can. Yeah, we do. Also, because try- people work, from home now they don't even walk to the station to get to work so a lot of people walk even less than they used to yeah Uh, like but basically this thing that wasn't the weirdest thing but it's told me every city and town I went to last year but I was on my laptop going into it more earlier and you can type in any day of the year and I was doing it earlier any day of the year and it will bring up and show you um where you were and how far you traveled and what form of transport that day Mm. do you not think that's a bit scary well i don't see what the point i I don't really see what the point in it is for like for consumers unless you're just interested in that thing but maybe for google google will probably use it for advertising and so they'll maybe if loads of a certain type of person goes to a specific location they'll use that data to know um like they'll learn the habits of certain people and then they'll target the advertising that's what they usually do on on things like facebook yeah so they they, they use like like when people think, oh, their phone's listening, it's normally not there. It's normally just that if you visit, let's say you, let's say you visit someone frequently and that person has a cat. So they keep searching for cat stuff. Eventually, if you connect to their Wi-Fi, it will start suggesting you similar things because it assumes that you're a similar person. That's how like a lot of these work. Yeah, I don't think it's good to have... You can have this on iPhone as well, where it sets the reminders, like, based on location. So if you've left your house, you can get a reminder or when you get back to your house. But I don't think... That's I don't the, think having these locations on are that useful. No, it's... Really, it's like, or necessary. Yeah, it's like with the, uh, the data privacy, they just ask for it. And most of us, like me, like I was not aware it was tracking me to this level last year. Had I known, mm. okay, okay, let me give you an example. Pick any date and any day last year and I can tell you exactly where I was. Yeah, August the 7th. Okay, August the 7th. I was, oh, this is weird. Oh, yeah, I was in Bath. I walked for 2.1 miles that day. At 10.20 in the morning, I went for a three-hour walk for three hours, 16 minutes. Uh, I went to Tesco. It's telling me I went to Tesco Express at 3.30, at uh, 1.30, sorry, p.m. And then I walked home again, and I got home at six minutes to two. So this, so, so my phone and Google knew where I was basically every minute of the day when I moved that day. Mm-hmm. It knew exactly where I was at what time. Does it surely does it need internet? Do you were you connected to the internet this whole time or can it 
I don't know. Things like probably. That. If, if I was living in Bath at the time, probably. But mate, if you could see this, it's, you know, when you plan a route and it's got the blue line, what streets you went down on Google, mm. it's, it's showing me that. It's showing me my entire, wait, let's try another day. It's showing me my entire de- uh, movement that day, which is weird. Yep, it's telling me on September the 14th, I went to Bristol and back. Uh, it told me what times it knew I drove. That is weird, isn't it? That is weird. And the whole year... I, I don't know what the no use... idea it was doing this. I wonder what uses they have for it, aside from advertising, maybe. Or just learning. Yeah, it's learning about people. us. So these days they do uh, like pres- prescriptive analytics, I think it's called, when they analyze the data and try and predict your next purchasing decisions and stuff, and then mm. send that advertisers. And it's, it's very powerful. And they get it for free a lot of the time because people like mm. me just click when little things pop up asking. As I just click through, I never read it properly. Yeah, I don't know. I think if you read the terms and conditions, there'd be some odd things in there that you wouldn't actually agree to if you knew what was in there yeah for sure and it's it's all law it's all lawyer talk it's lawyers Mm. you know it's it's some of the best lawyers in the world these companies have paying huge amounts of money for to produce these terms and conditioning uh service terms and services contracts it's like have you ever tried reading legislation it's so so difficult to understand yeah it's it's yeah it's convoluted and it's too technical but they also know most people won't read it yeah for sure for sure um and it's it's yeah it's bizarre it is bizarre the legal industry they're always arguing over the definition of words these obscure words that are never really used in everyday language and then these lawyers Mm. paid like hundreds of thousands of pounds to try fight it for some for some big corporation in court not that there's anything wrong with that. It's perfectly legal. I'm just thinking my future jobs and stuff. If they ever hear this, but you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I wonder how many people in these companies actually use or agree with these services that they offer. Like, how many people like working at Google would actually endorse? Like if they weren't being paid, how many of them would endorse these things? Oh, it's, it's a good question with the old uh, ethics and that. Mm. Uh, I wanted to. A lot of them probably would endorse that actually because they maybe they think this is some great beneficial thing for most people. But yeah, privacy is a big issue these days. Like with these companies yeah but uh, yeah facial and like all the um tracking and facial recognition it's not it, it has very good uses but it's not ben- not always beneficial for everyone yeah it's scary uh i i wanted to talk to you about um Basically, we were watching the Gordon Ramsay, and I don't know, he's with the three guys, the chef one, and they were on ITV, mm. the show, and they were at a Scottish estate. It was a big, like, castle mansion type thing, and it was an earl that owned it. Mm. Right. And um, do you know, we were reading up about these earls, and they are descendants of the royal family, so but it goes like there's a there's a hierarchy of royals yeah uh, it's uh, wait, apparently uh, this uh, third uh, huh i i, I did apparently uh, earls yeah i was gonna cut because i was loading this thing up remember the thing to cut if you ever need to search something <laughs> oh yeah sorry well, i'm I, reading now apparently they're the third rank of peerage mm-hmm Above Viscount and Baron, but below Duke and Marquess. About the Earls, it's um, basically, I'm not sure what times exactly, but maybe you could search what times that this this law was in place. 
the kings and queens and the royals used to be the tax revenue collectors. So the earls mm. to take, I think it was a 30% tax off all the people or something. And then they used that money to build huge castles that their great, 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 great grandchildren now live in. Yeah, and a lot of them can't afford to maintain these. So that's why a lot of like these homes, you can visit them because the families are like they have a lot of assets, but they don't have that much cash to actually maintain the yeah. property. So they end up opening property, like sections to them like that have huge upkeepings. Their overhead running costs will go into tens and tens, maybe like 50,000 a year or 100,000 a year. Yeah, they're expensive and they're old. So a lot of them need to be like refurbished. It eats away at you, but it's kind of crazy. So if you do ever encounter any earls to the uh, four people listening to the podcast, remember the ask them for your great, great, great granddad's tax money back because their ancestors would have taken it to build their castles. Mm. what do you think of the uh the revelations with the prince harry and the book because what is it in spain in spain it's being released slightly early so the, everyone's obviously translated it and the details have come out i didn't know that it was uh, that they were releasing it earlier there. Right. Yeah. What would you think about it? The, the, um, well, problem with all these, this, these level of people is you only know what you hear about them unless yeah. you're there like when these things happen you only the only stuff you know about them is like accounts that are given by people and stuff written in the media so like you can't really draw a, an accurate opinion of like what's going on a lot of people will draw oh, an opinion sure. and, and say like yeah or act like they know about it with me i don't actually support the royals in general but and i think mm -hmm. i think all sides are milking like their chances with the media so yeah I, I, they're gonna they're gonna it's natural for it kind of makes sense for him to be releasing this book because the british media are mostly against them whereas um in America, there isn't really a, like a tabloid media like we have here. So I, th I thought there is. What do you mean by tabloid? Like traditional paper? Well, it, well, it's not like here how you have. Basically, the media isn't a gate. The media isn't writing against them as much. Like okay. they have. Well, I mean, um, it. The media in Britain is sort of writing against them mostly, and they don't really have any, they don't really have any big papers or any kind of outlets to say yeah. like their side, aside from, well, apart from that documentary, they just did. But I mean, they don't have, like with them, they're using like the Netflix and this book. Yeah. Whereas here, that's, that's true. media. That's true. The Netflix is their, it's their media arm. But thing is, though, if they just had their own Twitter account, so I'm pretty sure they have their own Instagram account, they could just post directly. If they really felt like the uh, the media, they hate, they weren't liking what they're saying to such an extent, they could just post directly. But back to what you were saying with, um, you know, we only see what sort of gets presented to us in terms of the images and people like, a, like a lot of people don't realize that these kind of people have some of the best like PR public well apparently some of the best PR public relation people in the world to try and advise them on how what to drop to the public how to present themselves to the public like some rich famous people spend a lot of money on that kind of stuff mm. but I, I I think the, the the problem with that though 
is that even though they spend a lot of time with you, your PR manager, if you just manage it yourself, like no one knows yourself as well as you know you, except maybe your partner, but probably not your PR manager. But you know what I mean? But but having said that, I've never been in, uh, uh, like I'm not super famous or anything. So I, I, I don't know how easy that is to do. I can't imagine it's that easy. But do you know what I mean? No, I think also until that, like with um, William and Kate, they were quite, they're usually quite silent about matters and they stay out of the media whereas now um well that's the family generally they're meant to like be above politics and stuff and they're not meant to be loud about their internal affairs even though like they have lots of scandals in that family but um uh now that all this ever since i think whilst the queen was alive they were more bothered about like she held them together a bit more, but now I think people like in the family are less bothered about keeping up appearances. Yeah. And they have to, also if someone accuses you of something, you have right of response. So it, you, if eventually I think um, uh, the royal household was going to respond to this stuff, even though they try not to. But yeah, I heard. I heard that they were waiting to see what the uh, the US TV interviews what was said. Or well, this is what some I think it was a Sky journalist was saying that they're going to try wait until Harry's done all his interviews in the US, done all his interviews related to the book, and then make a comment afterwards. Because within the next week he's doing a lot of interviews, so it wouldn't make sense for the royals to comment now before he's about to speak a lot more. But yeah, I mean, I got to be honest, I am in like, I like the royal family. That's just my stance on them. I'm not anti the royals. I think, you know, the past is the past and they haven't had a good past like their ancestors haven't. But to, to keep judging people on uh, their ancestors' decisions, I don't think is that fair. Um, yeah, but w- what are you, are you pro, anti in the middle? I don't really support. I don't support um, having a monarchy, but I also don't think we should harass them just because yeah. they are in the monarchy. And also no one um, no one chooses where they're born. But, but I think the obsession with the royal family is a bit strange in this country. I don't understand. No, I don't understand that either. Like, I don't understand why people like them so much. I think people just like to cling on to emblems of like nationhood. Well, here's the so thing. so when you attack the royal family, people sent like the way it's received is an attack on Britishness, even though it isn't. Yeah, well, they are deeply woven into uh, the perception from overseas, other countries' perception of the UK, a lot of that, you know, the royal family, the tradition, cricket, scones, etc. Um, yeah. And the Queen, most people, when you talk about the royal family, they only mention the Queen, but yeah. the others, no one really cares about yeah. the other members that much. So no. I feel like now the Queen has died, people like even royalists are admitting it's not as the family isn't as important well the queen in terms of if you want to break it down into like how a bit she she was a brand and an image and so was the royal family but yeah i think she was the most photographed person it, it was oh really it was arguable that she was bigger a bigger brand than the royal family everyone knew the queen of england the queen like but you didn't hear anything about the royal family apart from the queen you're right and what she yeah, said, it, most, most people person, don't. She said. and she was there a long time or the longest time then she's the longest reigning and i don't think any i don't think you will ever get a longer reigning monarch because oh it's unlikely like not in definitely not in our lifetime, but even like in the next few like g- 
generations of royals. You won't get anyone as long reigning. No, 100%. Her reign was extremely long. Uh, I'm just Goog I'm trying to Google now the list of US presidents whilst she was the queen. And there were, th there were 13 US presidents. Whilst the queen was the queen of England, there was Harry Truman, Eisenhower, JFK. 13? Yeah, JFK, hmm. Nixon, Gerald Ford, Nevin. <laughs> I heard of all of them. I never heard of Gerald Ford. He didn't do a lot in office. Uh, Ronald Reagan, heard of him. George Bush, heard of him. George Bush again. Uh, Obama, heard of him. Who's uh, Do Donald Trump? You ever heard of him? Mm. <laughs> Is that a terrible joke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she met... I remember when, like, so he visited here, actually, when he was president. Yeah, I don't think people, I think people overestimate the relevance of the royal family now, especially now. Well, if they were gone, you wouldn't notice. No, not now. Like how often do you actually see the royal? This is why I always say to all this, how often do you actually see the queen? Or did you see the Queen? People always say, oh, I love the Queen. But realistically, <laughs> how often did you see her? Yeah. In person? Oh, in or person. in the media? Never. Never. Maybe five times in your lifetime? That's so true. But maybe, Yeah. Okay, maybe. maybe not five. And if, if you watch the Christmas message, you'd see her every year. But if, like, if you genuinely, I like... In I like, person, I like, like going round in in parades and stuff. You don't didn't see her that often. No, it's it, it, it's uh, it's true. You didn't see her that often. Although you get to see the young royals quite often when they're doing like charity stuff. Not me personally, but you could if you wanted to. You could see them, if you and they do meet. They do meet people a lot, but I yeah I don't think there's a need or place for like monarchy in this day and age and they and they get their power via the divine right like originally which is a bit silly now explain the divine right um it basically means that they're god's represent yeah they're god's representatives on earth and they derive their legit like their legitimacy from that that's what I was going to tell you. I watched this uh, documentary about them. And back in the olden days, uh, the, the royals, the leaders of countries uh, were presented in a higher, like an almost immortal status, a higher than human status with some devout uh, connections to Christianity, if it were in those Christian countries. Yeah, so here, it, basically, it, it means they derived their authority from God and could therefore not be held accountable for their actions by any earthly authority such as parliament. Basically, they could bypass like laws and they were basically they were above the law. And um, a monarch isn't actually allowed into like the House of Commons. Oh, really? They're not allowed in? Yeah, you're not allowed. But I forgot which king it was. But there's a but basically when they open parliament they do this thing where they slam they slam the door in this guy's face and he has to knock. But it's not the monarch, it's like their representative. Now are you telling me are you telling me the 1992 Eton schoolboys tour to parliament, uh Prince William had to wait outside? <laughs> well, let me find yeah, you're not allowed. They're not allowed into the House of... They're allowed into the House of Lords. Mm -hmm. Let's... I wanted to talk to you a bit, whilst you're finding that, about uh, politics. And I was listening to... Do you know who Rory Stewart is, that Conservative MP? Yeah. Yeah, he does a podcast with Alistair Campbell, who used to be the advisor... Spin... Brown, is that right? Yeah, he was a spin doctor. 
a spin doctor is that blue. And they do a podcast and it's really interesting. It's all about it's majority, the majority of it's about politics. And uh Alistair Campbell, he was explaining how uh Gordon Brown, when he was the Prime Minister, he meets with the Queen like once a week, every single week. So if you're meeting with somebody once a week, every week, having like an hour lunch or whatever for four years, like you're probably gonna get quite close to that person. And yeah, I don't know, it just it just reminded me of the power that the uh that the royals have that they'd still have to meet with the queen once a week and that's she's been meeting with the leader once a week every week for years because these weekly meetings with the monarch happen behind closed doors we as the public can never fully know what goes on and it's reasonable to assume that they do express um lots of different opinions and influence what um, the politicians do otherwise they wouldn't have these meetings but um, the monarch is expected not to state their opinion publicly but during the um, Scottish independence referendum the queen made a rare public comment and she said um, she hopes that voters will think very carefully about the future and this was right before the Scots were going to cast their votes. So there are occasions where they do um, state their opinion on matters, but it's very subtle. Yeah, I, I think it's fascinating. I'd love to be a, a fly on the wall during some of those meetings with uh, you know, Rishi Sunak and well, the king now. But when, when they used to be the queen, I mean, she must have been so knowledgeable having seen so many different prime ministers. And she probably sometimes is thinking, oh, great, <laughs> see where this guy's going. This guy's going to mess up, just like Wilson did or something. <laughs> but yeah, it's fascinating. All right, bro, shall we uh, wrap this up? Can you just read uh, out the quote? Yeah, okay. I thought, okay. 